direct experience because rather than to appeal to your you know intellect so the topic is about depression or psychological conditions which means anything i mean we are all having psychological conditions and none of us is really completely healthy we are all having our stresses our emotions and uh, all of these things so first of all we need to a uh, look within our own selves and see if we can heal ourselves first so that this process of healing we can kind of transmit or we can help the patient also to heal and uh, how can we do that <clears throat> so first we have to see what stress is and where it arises and here is a, we we have to look into ourselves and to see that and at some point in our seeing we will see that it originally we think stress comes from the outside world we think he causes it she causes it and you will think that the situation causes it or the health causes the economics causes it the relationship causes and then we try to blame the outside or solve the outside or change the outside or run away from the outside but at some point we have to be able to see that it's not the other thing that is causing it but the effect of that on us and how does our system perceive and react to that external situation and then when you see that you will see that in different situations you yourself i'm talking about you have a certain pattern of experience and of reaction so there could be fear that could be grief that could be anger there could be all of these things but there is a pattern and this pattern is first of all an emotional pattern some people get angry 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 some people feel sad 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 some are afraid 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 anxious 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 so there is a certain emotional pattern and beneath that emotional pattern there is a imagination pattern that means it is you are afraid of something because you imagine that it is dangerous you are angry with something because you imagine that that thing has hurt you or offended you 
you are disappointed with something because in your imagination you expected something else and it turned out to be something else. So beneath this pattern of emotion, there is a pattern of imagination or perception. And when you take it one level deeper than that, there is a level of deep inner experience. So let's say you are afraid of a, of a cockroach, you know, there is a fear. And in your imagination, this cockroach can hurt you, it can cause harm to you, you see. That's why you're afraid, because the fear comes from that imagination. But when you go deeper to that imagination, that that is going to come and it's going to approach you and it's going to hurt you. <laughs> this, this, there is a pattern of experience, even deeper than imagination. <laughs> And this experience, this pattern of experience is completely your own. It's not coming from the cockroach. It's coming from you. And this not only is caused by the cockroach, but it's also caused by the policeman. You drive a car and there's a policeman. <gasps> it's caused by anything. So there is a pattern of emotion, beneath there is a pattern of perception or imagination and beneath that there is a pattern of sensation or experience. And all of these are your own pattern, it's not coming from the outside world. The outside world excites it, the cockroach excites it, the policeman excites it. But they didn't cause it. They didn't create it. It's already inside you. And it is this pattern which is indwelling in you that is the cause of stress, not the outside. If this pattern was not there, the cockroach or the policeman or the mother-in-law or whoever is not causing stress for you. Nobody can. It's because of this inbuilt individual pattern, which is your own individual pattern, that you are feeling the stress. And you are having depression, and you are having anxiety, and you are having... These anxiety and depression and all are only labels. They have no value, no meaning because they are just outside labels. What is, has a meaning is this pattern. And this inner pattern is what really needs to be healed. And how can you heal it? You can heal it by several uh, methods, method possibilities. The first possibility is of course the homeopathic matching remedy, the remedy that matches this deep inner pattern. You see? So you can practice homeopathy also at many, many levels. You know, you can practice homeopathy at a physical level, pathological level, at an emotional level. Oh, he has grief, so I will give Ignatia that level also. Or he is afraid of the dark, I will give him stramonium. You can practice this level also. But if you really want to have deep healing. Of course, these remedies will help as well, but they will not help for too long because they are 
remedies for the moment, not the remedies for the person. If you want deep healing, you will have to explore the deep inner pattern that exists and match at that level. I can give you a small um, case illustration that I just saw this morning, so it is fresh in my mind. So this patient has is about 40 year old male patient with severe, severe, severe bladder problems. Terrible, terrible burning, he says. Terrible burning. Burning before urine, during the urine, pricking, smarting, frequent urine. 50 times at night he has to get up for urination. There is blood in the urine. There is hematuria. And he says, my life is an absolute terrible, terrible condition, you see. Now, if you put all the symptoms of him, this burning, 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 etc., etc., one remedy that will be indicated is cantharis. And the homeopathic doctor who referred him to me had already given him cantharis with not too much of a result. So therefore, one has to look much deeper. So the question I asked him is, what do you feel? How do you experience this? In this problem. And he says, you know, it completely restricts my life and I feel helpless. This is very interesting, you see, what he said, because every person who tells you about his problem will tell something else. Somebody could say it is hell, it is I cannot bear it, it's too much. Somebody could say, I'm very afraid that it's going to kill me. If something terrible is happening to me, you know, it could be cancer, I don't know. So each one will react according to his inner pattern. So one of the best questions to ask in a homeopathic case taking is, how does this illness affect you? This is very important. It will lead you straight to the individuality of the person. That's, so he said himself, it restricts me and I feel helpless. So the next question I asked him is, very good. You said it restricts you. So can you now disconnect from this bladder problem, urine problem, even from yourself. And just describe the word, it restricts or restriction. What is, what is this? Unrelated to the urine, unrelated to you also. Because your experience is restriction. What is restriction? So this is a very good way of asking the question. Take the experience out of the context. Say, what is restriction? And he says, restriction means there is no freedom. What is freedom then? He says, freedom, and then he shows his hand, freedom is expansion. And what's the opposite? said, it's like this, it is heavy, it is closed, it is dark, and the opposite is expand, explore, go out, experience, feel. So now we know why cantharis did not work, because cantharis had the local symptoms, but it did not have 
his innermost experience, which is closed, heavy, dark, and the opposite, light, free, expansive, exploratory. This is the exact experience or the sensation of the family to which cannabis indica belongs. The family is called hemamelidae. The group is called hemamelidae, not the family. So this group, hemamelidae, has this exact sensation. And the remedy cannabis indica itself has a lot of urinary burning and symptoms that he had. So that's the remedy he received and he's feeling better with this. So therefore, homeopathy has to be practiced at that deep level of the recognition of the inner pattern of sensation or experience. And you have to match that with the group of the remedy whether it is animal, mineral, plant, and if it is a plant, whether it is a monocot, dicot, whether it is a first subclass, second subclass, or third, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth. And everything is beautifully, beautifully defined in the kingdom theory. And this helps us to find, locate where the remedy is. If you want to learn more about this, there are webinars on subclass and superclass that I have given, and you could learn from that. So the one way of healing is to give the appropriate homeopathic remedy that matches this innermost pattern of ours, of experience that causes all the stress, all the depression, all the psychological problem, its root is this inner pattern of experience. In homeopathy, we don't believe that any condition is psychosomatic. That means we don't believe that depression causes problems or anxiety causes problems. No, we don't believe this. We believe that anxiety itself is an expression of the disease as much as any physical uh, issue. So we don't believe in psychosomatic or somatopsychic issues or mind is the cause of the problem. No, no, no. Mind is an expression of the same inner pattern that also expresses in the body. So we look at mind and body as one totality. In fact, the sensation is the common denominator of both mind and body. So when you say my experience is, <gasps> so this is mind or body, it's both. When you say I feel heavy, you could mean mind and body. When you say I feel light, it is both mind and body. So sensation is at that level where the mind and body express in the same language. That is why the sensation idea is at the root of homeopathy. If you want to learn more about sensation idea, there are books on the subject and seminars on the subject. In my Wednesdays with Rajan 1, 2 and 3, online webinars and books like Sensation in Homeopathy deal with this subject. Now, let's take it a little bit further. We say that giving the matching homeopathic remedy is one way of healing this problem of this deep inner pattern that causes all our stress and all our, uh, you know, diseases also. What are the other possible methods to do this? You see, we can explore 
other uh, methods. One of them is music. What do you mean by this? So, you know, music, I study um, Indian classical music for many years now. And it is a system that consists of melodies, which are called ragas. Each raga is a harmonic melody with certain notes. It's sung in a particular sequence. So what we discovered was that each raga, it induces a certain state or an experience in healthy volunteers, like a proving, you know, like how you prove a remedy, you can do a proving of a raga. And when we do that kind of proving and we list all of those effects of a specific raga on a group of provers, listeners of this raga, they write down exactly what happens to them and we understand the effect of that raga, then you can use that information in the healing process. So if you find somebody with a similar pattern that the raga could produce, it can heal based on the same law of homeopathy. So therefore, uh, I led a proving of 25 different ragas, and now we have collated all the information and uh, I am about to create an app based on this, where a person will write down, you know, what his main emotions, sensations, imaginations are in that thing. And by an algorithm that is built in the app, it will choose this, you know, the appropriate raga and it will play it to him. This can be a healing agent also. If you are interested in this, you can write to me and I can send you more information about it, about the ragas and about the app. If we are about to create it, it's not yet done. But in order that we get a practical experience, I would suggest that I could sing you one raga right now. And what you can do is you can, first of all, stop your cell phones and put it off and all of that so that you are not interrupted. And just allow the sound to go into you. No, don't think, don't use your um, logical mind, just allow yourself to experience whatever there is, mind or body. And after that, I will request a few of you to share in few words only, just three, four words, what was your main experience. Let's see what happens. It's an experiment. But it is very possible that if you do it sincerely, you will experience something that you might not have experienced before. Let's see. Don't listen to your ear or your mind, but just through your inner experience.
सानी वैनी सरेगा रेगा रे रेगा गे रे सा would some of you like to share with our moderators in a few words only two word three words your innermost experience especially at a physical level or a you know at a deeper level and can the moderators can you read those out so that all of us can hear very nice um, sir it is very pleasant and uh, um, dr swetha please uh, go ahead please read some of the responses if you are getting some sir uh, there is one question from dr suvarna once we find a remedy at sensation level with the uh, will the person remain in the same remedy throughout his life 
what does this different states of mind indicate where remedy keep changing depending on the state of mind please explain yes we will do that but we are now focused a little bit on the music and what was the experience of it okay is there any response in this direction yes we have many um, i think there are hundreds of messages um, dr shankaran felt like i like and, hundreds uh, of messages but read a few okay go sweta go ahead <laughs> there are some responses like uh, the people uh, dr mega feel light want to uh, to dance and one more responses about feeling light one question how could we control our soul and mind with this music dr rama said inside i felt wave like pattern peaceful felt on verge of tears and my throat choked up and stomach queasy Doctor uh, Regina, ma'am, uh, said uh, sacred and unconditional love vibe. Doctor Minu. Doctor Anita said floating on the sea so far, felt light. And Doctor Vinodini asked, uh, sir, is it Raga Sindhu Bhairavi? Uh. nauseous crying deep peace peaceful tears rolling out rag malar brings on rain so if can affect the climate why not humans we have lot of responses very soothing and relaxing very pleasant peace light and pleasant peaceful okay good yeah so many of you had some experiences at an emotional level you had an experience at a physical level light floating etc tears coming out very nice so you see how deep the effect of music can be and i just sang to you for less than 5 minutes you know can you imagine hearing this for 20 minutes half an hour one hour and uh, allowing it to go inside you without asking questions you know is it this raga that raga should it do this should you no know, no listen not from your mind but from your deeper experience and then you will you will be able to start to feel things inside you without logic the main important word in homeopathy and in healing is without logic without reason you see the moment logic comes in then reality is lost because logic says it should be like this or should not be like this but reality is it is what it is so the whole premise of homeopathy is the premise of experience not the premise of logic this is what really has to sink very deep into you if you understand this you you are you know you are a real homeopath if you don't understand this you are not a homeopath and what do you have to understand that the truth is what is what you experience this is the truth not what you should experience or what should be or what should not be or how it should be how it should not be which category does it fit in which raga it is this is not truth this is label depression is a label it's not the truth the truth is what you experience and the deeper and the finer you are able to experience it healing will be that deep just the awareness of your own experience is itself a process of healing so when you take a case of the patient you don't ask him why you are angry or you know what is the logic behind your anger what is the reason for your anger you ask him how is the experience of anger for you and that is that is the truth for the patient 
not what is logical. For him, the experience of anger may be, go, 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 go. that's okay, it's no problem. It doesn't have to fit your logic. It has to be his experience, which is the truth for him. And once you get there, then you have to see what matches, whether it's the right remedy or the right music or the right therapy also. Counseling also can be uh, a similimum, a homeopathic. There are many methodologies, not only the remedy. You have music, you have counseling, and you have so many things. I want to introduce you to two more things and then we will stop today. The first thing what I want to introduce you is to wise process. Wise means witnessing the inner song experience. So what we do in this wise, we, are, we have created a lot of wise processes, you see. And uh, I'm just finalizing my book called The Use of Wise Process in Homeopathic Case Taking. The book is called From Shadow to Light. And I think it will be out within one month. But what it talks about is many, many organically, originally developed processes which help us to go beyond the logic, beyond the reasoning into the experience. Because this is the biggest barrier. Our mind is the biggest barrier. So how to cross that? So what we do, for example, I'm telling you one process which you can do right now, you see? Normally we show them pictures. We show one picture, you know, one photograph. And we say, just imagine that you are, you know, who is this person? What is happening to this person? Like that, you know, we show the... But I will do one process right now here, and that is known as posture. What you have to do now, Watch carefully what I'm doing. What you have to do is to adopt a posture. I'll show you the posture you adopt it. Not now, I'll show it to you. And after you adopt this posture, close your eyes and let your imagination go wild. And you imagine in which imaginary situation you are in in which you have taken this posture. What is happening? What's the scenario around you for which you have taken this posture? And let it play out like a movie or like a drama. You see, like a movie is better. And as you are in that situation in the movie, start to experience what is happening within you. Okay? So, all of you can just look at me and take this posture. Just do that. And while you are in this posture with your eyes closed, just imagine in any time period, maybe thousand years before, thousand years after, maybe in India, in Africa, on the moon, doesn't matter where you are, when you are, what you are, you can be somebody else also, no problem. But just imagine what is happening to be in this posture. Imagine the whole scenario. And while you imagine the scenario, start to focus on your inner experience to be in this scenario. And just describe this experience of yours in three or four words only. Just describe that experience and write it and send it on the chat to the moderator so that they can read it out. Just put three words or four words about this experience. And as you get those things, please read it out. Dr. Shweta.
getting focused and prepared to make a high type great feeling go on there may be many more like walking in space restrictive strange and deep, deep feeling in the chest surrendering to the highest higher force deep forest being safe crying scared i'll frighten them someone closed with am i unhappy dance fear confusion seem feel like in space in stars calm table hiding hiding in the forest feeling heavy on my head wandering near water and mountain closing oneself to go more deeper concentrated to third eye feeling scared isolating myself protecting oneself from outer hazards so yes so you can see now with this process how your inner core pattern so each one whatever you have written is you is your inner pattern it has nothing to do with this posture as you can see everybody had it own, his own experience so this is one of the ways in which we can sir you know bypass the logic and get into the inner experience of the patient and this this process is very useful in homeopathic case taking as well as in healing we use this a lot in healing workshops we do a lot of healing workshops if you want to know more about it then you have to go to the website www.sampurnamhealing.com it's s a m p w o r n a m healing one word dot com so we do lot of workshops retreats where we use these wise process this is one wise process we have about 25 of these wise processes that we use and you can use it in practice with great benefit but for that you need to read about it through the book and get some training it's not so easy to do it at first go so this is another way which i am trying to teach you how to heal your pattern how to go deeper etc and finally before we finish i want to speak a little bit about meditation because this is also one very very important healing tool that we can do on for ourselves and we can help the patients also and many times in my clinic i sit and meditate with the patient it also gives me an excuse to meditate also right so instead of speaking about meditation it is better that we take a few minutes and we do it right now like we did the other things and how how we do it so let's um let us take a comfortable position and uh, make sure that the cell phones are switched off otherwise no use and we just close our eyes if you do this very sincerely you will benefit a lot and through you your patients will benefit a lot so you gently close your eyes and you start to become aware of three things in fact of three 
layers or three levels the first level is the outer world so you know around you the world is there things are happening in it corona virus is going on economy is going down politics is happening relationships are there houses are there atmosphere is there newspapers movies gossip everything is there like a circus the outside world is a circus it's all going on can you see that through your mind's eye just watch observe don't react don't judge don't think about it just become aware that there is an outer world around you you can feel the temperature on you you can feel the wind on you or not you know the chair or wherever you are sitting you can experience something outside of you just become a watcher and a observer not a judge but just a witness then become aware of your inner world your mind and body so your body is there your arms legs abdomen trunk chest neck head eyes mouth nose breathing respiration heart stomach intestines and the mind thoughts in the mind emotions you see thoughts emotions memories beliefs concepts identity plans fear anger grief happiness expectation all this going on inside your mind and in your body breathing digestion heartbeat become aware of this inner world outer world inner world just watch it watch it watch it no judgment just what is there just watch it thoughts coming and going breath coming and going now slowly understand that there must be somebody who is watching this outer world and the inner world the one who is watching is not in the outer world because he is watching it and he cannot be in the inner world also because he is watching it he is the witness of it so now from the outer world to the inner world can we travel deeper to the witness of all of this the one who is watching he is not the thought he is not the body because he is looking at the body he is looking at the thought he is looking at the memory who is this witness who is the one who is watching it's not even your name you know because even your name is something you can watch 
And all that you can watch can change. Thoughts change, names change, memories change, emotions change, outer reality changes. But this witness does not change. He was the same when you were a child, he was the same when you are middle-aged, adult, old age. He's watching the body change. But he does not change. Who is it? There is no answer to this question. But by asking this question, we come to a place which is called presence, being, isness. It has no quality. It has no personhood. It has no identity or individuality. It is just there. It is still. It is quiet. It is peaceful. It is just there. It was always there. It always will be there. Even when your body is gone. Can you experience it? Can you stay in this? Can you abide in this instead of abiding in the outer world or the inner world? Now let your eyes slowly open, reorient yourself to the current reality, to the world around you and come back slowly, slowly, slowly. And whatever your experience in this moment, if you can put in two or three words and write it to the moderator, so Dr. Shweta can read it out. Right in this moment, what is your experience? How does it feel? Dr. Ashok Madan wrote, uh... It is the so so called Atma is watching the inner and outer world, you so called. Peaceful, want to be there. Inner peace, peace, calm observer. I felt very peaceful. Soul connection, totally calm. Enjoy the experience, but hard to maintain. Happy and peaceful. Good. Deep silence. Fine. That is good enough. So this is our true state. This peacefulness is our original true state. All the other layers come on top of that. So when we discount all of that, we can come back to the state of peacefulness. This you must cultivate by practice and teach it to your patient because this will help a lot in healing. So 
So these are the various things I wanted to share with you about homeopathy, about mindfulness, about music, about meditation. And uh, I'm sure there are a lot of questions, but uh, I'm not sure that I want to answer any of them at the moment because they are addressing your head from your head, from your mind. Try to absorb what I gave you. If you still have questions after some time, you're most welcome. I can give you my email. You can write info at sankaransclinic.com. S-A-N-K-A-R-A-N-S clinic.com. You're most welcome to send any queries there. Or you can visit any of my websites, which is sankaransclinic.com, theothersong.com, synergyhomeopathic.com, the HOPE website, hope at synergyhomeopathic.com. So you can visit any of these websites because these are all the tools that I use for my books. It is online, hmp.com, hmp, online, hmp.com hmp is homeopathic medical publishers there you will get also details of all my courses online courses such as wednesdays with rajan 1 2 and 3 and the subclass and super class course which is the latest one and all my books are there the other song is the place where we give clinical training and it's a it's a temple of learning and you can look at the website and see what possibilities exist. Synergy Homeopathic is the software, Synergy Homeopathic software, which I use and which most of the teachers of homeopathy use. And it's our lifeline to homeopathic practice. And it's come out in a new version now, which is beautiful. You can have a look at that. So these are the resources you can look at. On the YouTube, there are at least 10 of my meditation videos that are available for free. You can, you can happily use it. If you want to know more about WISE, there is a book called Sankaran's Device with all the pictures that I use. It is available on the HMP website. And the new book that will come out, Shadow to Light, the WISE process in homeopathic case taking. And uh, if you want to uh, send, you want us to send you information about future courses, etc. You can always uh, write to other song or to info at sankaransclinic.com and we'll put you on our mailing list. So thank you to Dr. Kavita and her team. And uh, it has been, they are doing amazing work of bringing good homeopaths within the reach of all of you. And I wish them all the best and uh, for this very, very important role that they are playing. And I wish them success, continued success with cooperation of all of you. So goodbye and uh, good wishes. Thank you so much, um, sir, for your precious time and sharing your knowledge. And um, it was beautiful ho learning homeopathy, music, meditation, and we had a lot of so much thing we have uh, learned today and many people there are several questions but um, we will answer them next time when you come and um, just um, Professor Regina would you like to say a few words yes it was a wonderful webinar uh, thank you Dr. Sankaran and the vivid meditation and the raga was uh, truly God's presence in our life. Thank you for that. Your inner richness poured on us your wisdom, which is priceless. Thank you. I would also encourage the ones that are not yet in the Ka family, please follow our social media in the YouTube, in the LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
and um, in the for receiving the continuing educational credits we have a jot form in the chat and for those who are watching live on facebook they can email us to carstudygroup at gmail.com we have car webinar on october 4th on demystifying good death by dr k ganapati he is a neurosurgeon he was past president telemedicine society of india and neurological society of india and uh, I thank Car Homeopathy Study Group team for the continuous support. There are many people who have joined today. Um, uh, the group team like Dr. Deepa, Dr. Nasimha, Dr. Poonam, Dr. Stravani, Dr. Nupur, and many more. And um, before we end, Dr. Sveta, would you like to say anything? Thank you, uh, Dr. Shankaran, for this amazing uh, webinar. It is uh, so relaxing and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And thanks to all the viewers for joining us. Please uh, subscribe our YouTube channel uh, the, with the, the name of Kavita Kukunu to watch all the previous webinars and this one also. And please uh, fill the Google form which I shared in the chat. chat and you will receive your certificate within a week. Thank you so much. Thank you once again, Dr. Shankaran. So it was very nice. And um, we wish you to come again to our webinars. Stay tuned to all our future webinars for more information. You can email us. And until then, stay healthy and happy. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.